Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 1995 black comedy horror film, The Day of the Beast, which is also known as El Dia de la Bestia uh, in Spanish. I probably butchered the pronunciation, but that's the original uh, title, which translates to The Day of the Beast. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I want to give a special shout out to Seth for requesting this review. If there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to my PayPal. The link will be in the video description down below. Now, The Day of the Beast is one of those films that I've been curious about seeing for a long time. I first heard about it in this book called The 101 Most Unheralded Horror Films by Fangoria. And ever since then, I've been trying to track it down. I've been trying to find it. It didn't really get that wide of a release in the U.S. And when it came out on a home video, I think it only got a VHS release. And overseas, it did have a DVD, but it didn't really have the best quality transfer and there really wasn't like the best version of the film on home video until fairly recently i think earlier this year and uh that's uh when it was ultimately given a release by severin in 4k as well as regular blu-ray um yeah this is restored on blu-ray for the first time ever in america now, I will say this, at the end of the day, I did like the film, I thought it was a good movie, but I felt that it could have been great, and it was held back by a muddled and ultimately really frustrating ending, because everything just didn't seem to gel, and to me... It was done in a fashion that was completely and totally unnecessary. And it's the kind of ending that really irritates me. Where a writer is trying to leave things open-ended but doesn't really know how to do it in the right way. So they just make it open-ended and then just make the entire film messy and convoluted. And it's just not at all something that really was necessary when it comes to this story or, or when it comes to the overall film. It's directed by Alex de la Iglesia. Uh, it's written by Jorge uh, Guerra Chivaria. I butchered his last name. I'm sorry. I just, I, it's a really long name, and I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not Spanish, so I don't know how to pronounce it properly. I'm just gonna call him Alex G, as well as, uh, I mean, uh, Jorge G. I'm gonna call him Jorge G. And then you also have uh, Alex uh, de la Iglesia, who also contributed to the the screenplay. Uh, it stars uh, Alex Angelo as uh, this priest, Father Angel. Uh, Armando de Raza is Professor Cavan, this uh, fake TV psychic. You've got uh, Santiago Segura, who plays Jose Maria, this metalhead character. And you have a few other actors and actresses like Terrell Pabez as Rosario, uh, Na Natalie uh, Cesena as Amina, uh, Maria Grazia, uh, Cucinata as Susana. But really, the main cast is compromised of the big three alex angelo armando di raza and santiago Segura. now the film from a pure visual perspective is a real treat alex de iglesia is a really talented director he knows how to really control movement when it comes to the camera in a very fluid fashion he has a very dynamic sense of style it's a very slick looking film uh there are a lot of shots that in some ways actually remind you of something you might have seen from brian de palma or hitchcock 
And you can see why other genre directors really did come away impressed with his work in this film and his work in general, like Gamero del Toro and so on. Uh, I think the direction in this is a definite highlight. It's got a good amount of energy to it. It's It really does fit the sinister, twisted, dark comic tone of the film very well. And there are some moments where it kind of reminds you of some early Peter Jackson work or, and uh, other showcases of surrealism from other directors. And I, I, I think... The direction is definitely one of the things that elevates this film to, at the very least, above average status because of the fact that the direction is so good. That being said, the screenplay is frustrating and disappointing because of the ending. Everything else leading up to that point, there are some issues that I have with it. For instance, the main plot of the film, I think, is brilliant. It's ballsy and brilliant. It deals with this priest named Father Angel who feels like in order to prevent the apocalypse, which is coming soon, according to his beliefs and the signs that he's seeing from God, that... He has to commit every sin that he possibly can in order to draw the attention of the devil so he can sell his soul to the devil in order to figure out where the birth of the Antichrist is going to occur. So he can then kill the Antichrist and prevent the apocalypse. So that plot in itself is genius. It's witty, it's dark, it's very edgy, and I love it. I mean, the scenes where he's going around shoving mimes down the stairs and doing all these acts of sin, it's fucked up, but it's funny because of the stakes. It's funny because of how you have this innocent-looking priest who's going around doing these horrific sins for a legitimate reason and incorporating that into the plot the way that it does it's unique and it really does make the film stand out in a good way but like halfway through it kind of starts to peter out a little bit because it doesn't really go for the jugular it doesn't go as wild as it could it starts out wild and has all these insane, crazy things that he's doing. He's shoplifting. He's attacking people. He's doing all this other stuff. He's stealing a wallet from a, a burnt uh, victim, like a guy who got burned and is near death, and he steals his wallet. So it, it starts off with a bang, but then like halfway through... You do have some moments where he's trying to collect some virgin blood and so on, but it seems like it kind of loses that, and you don't see him do more of these insane acts. It, it, he doesn't wind up upping the ante throughout the film, and I think that's definitely something that holds the, the story back a little bit because it makes you leaving it, it leaves you wanting more. You wanted him to go farther than he ultimately did. You wanted to see it go even crazier and it doesn't really do that because it starts to focus more on the fake psychic and uh this ceremony to try to get the devil to appear so that the priest can sell his soul to the devil there are some nice characterization uh not only with the with the priest character but with uh the metalhead character who runs this record shop um jose maria i love this character i thought this character was a lot of fun i thought this character was funny uh i know he kind of is an he's definitely an acquired taste but honestly so is the film i didn't care for his grandfather walking around with his dick and balls hanging out that was not needed i don't need to see old saggy balls 
Uh, but that being said, I did like the character. He was fun. Uh, spoiler for those of you who haven't seen the film, uh, he doesn't make it in the end, which is disappointing as well. Why did he have to die? Like, it didn't even seem like he even needed to die for the progress of the film and, and for the ultimate climax. So I don't know why they had to kill him off. I will say this though, he was kind of, he was a little annoying though when he was high as a kite and hanging off the sign and almost killed the two other characters. Like that was just that was a bit much. I, I think they could have definitely wrote that scene better. Cause prior to that point I liked the character quite a bit. And I still ultimately like the character enough. Cause I just look at it as he was high, he wasn't all there. So that's why he was doing that because of the result of the acid that he took. But regardless, they could have uh, eased back a little bit on that behavior. The ending, though, is what really hurts the film for me. It's not only entirely completely anticlimactic, which is frustrating in itself just alone. I mean, for instance... This, imagine a movie that's spending all this time building up and building up to a, a, a conflict, to some kind of conclusion, and it's all about trying to find the Antichrist and trying to kill the Antichrist before the apocalypse starts. And at the end of the film, the Antichrist, if it even is really the Antichrist, is already dead before Satan even appears on the screen. So it's like, what the fuck? Like, it just feels like you wasted all this momentum for nothing. Why? Why did you, why did the writers choose that path? I don't understand why they decided to go that route. Just like I don't understand why I decided to go really political in the end and focus really more on the politics than really the horror. By the end of the film, it doesn't really feel like it fully embraces the supernatural elements that were completely throughout the other parts of the movie. It's one of those things where you're like, why, why do that? And on top of that, by not fully embracing it and try and ultimately throwing out this idea that it was all in their head and it was just a result of them on some acid trip and the real evil was these insurrectionists who just wanted to stir up all this trouble and all this strife and do all these crimes in order to hopefully overthrow the current government. Even that doesn't work very well because there's other things that have to fall into place in ways that are relatively inconceivable in order for that to work. I mean, they just coincidentally find the opposite of a church in uh, Spain and they discover that the hideout of these insurrectionists is in the exact same place that coincides with all these ancient... Uh, scrolls and stuff like that that talk about the uh, place of the Antichrist's birth and the, shows the mark of the devil. It's like, and, and speaking of the mark of the devil, there's a mark of the devil on the possessed boy's chest. So it's like, this doesn't even work if you're trying to go for this particular route where you're trying to say oh it wasn't really the devil it wasn't really some supernatural thing it was all just uh, uh the result of uh, hysteria and uh, the whole point was just to show how insane and, and crazy spain was at the time when it comes to the politics it's like okay all right but the frustrating thing is, you can have both. You could have easily just had the same political message and also still embrace the supernatural element. Why did you have to have scenes that 
make everything that led up to this point seem relatively pointless because it's not it's not really about stopping the apocalypse it's about stopping these bands of insurrectionists i mean and even if it was really supposed to be about stopping the apocalypse the antichrist if it really is the antichrist gets killed by the the cult's own men gets killed by Satan's own men, own minions. They kill the Antichrist. Either Satan is a moron in this, or there's just a lot of things that just don't add up. I mean, and for those of you who think that I, I'm overthinking things, and that, oh, it, it is a supernatural horror film think about it Rewatch the film pay close attention in the sequence where the priest and the metalhead are on top of the building and they're getting attacked by these insurrectionists really the metalhead is the only guy who's getting his ass kicked because the priest is hiding under the girders so the priest is hiding under these girders and the metalhead is getting his ass handed to him and the only time you see Satan is when Satan just suddenly appears in the place of one of the insurrectionists. And then you have a sequence where the metalhead is laughing his ass off just like he was when he was high hanging off the sign earlier before he gets dropped by Satan. Then... You see the shadow of Satan on the ground when the priest turns around and shoots the last insurrectionist. So, by this logic, the devil is all of these guys? That doesn't make any sense. And if, if it really was an instance of the baby really was the Antichrist and the devil really was there... Why would the devil allow his own men to kill his son who's supposed to start the apocalypse and start his rule? Why would he allow that to happen so easily? Why would he even need their help to begin with? None of that is ever explained either why the devil needs these gang members, these random guys who are just committing random acts of violence. Why does he need them? It's never really established. And if you're trying to set up the fact that the devil gets vanquished by the priest at the end, that's a bunch of bullshit to me. The devil can't take a bullet? It's the fucking devil! Am I supposed to buy that the devil is going to get shot to death by a gun? No, come on. It's clearly intended to be one of those things where... It wasn't real. There was no Satan. There was no apocalypse. There was no day of the beast. It was all some obsession by this priest. And he just coincidentally managed to stop the real devil and the real terror that's going on uh, in his uh, backyard or in his city. But, like I said, it just doesn't even work on that front. It works on neither fronts, because the writing is just so confused and messy and muddled. And it just makes the film disappointing. I still like the movie, but I definitely don't love it solely due to this ending. Like, why did you have to do that? You can have your political message, you can do that, and you can still have the Antichrist... Be some kind of kid with a devil's head or something. Do some crazy Peter Jackson shit where the thing is walking on all fours backwards and jumping at the priest and he has to shoot it or whatever. Something. Instead, it just there's all this buildup that's effective and it just feels like it's completely and totally wasted in the end because there really is no devil. There really is no Antichrist. And all of this just never really was the way that it was showcased to be. 
Am I also supposed to buy that every single one of these characters had a shared hallucination when they took the acid? They all saw the same thing? So yeah, it's just one of those movies that just... Ah! You were so close to being great, and instead you're just good. You're just a solid film. And you could have been spectacular if you just embraced your supernatural elements in the first place. Why does it have to be an instance of it was all in their head and it was just an acid trip and they just coincidentally stopped the real evil? But I know it might seem like it's a rant, but it's not because ultimately I did like the film. The ending is just frustrating. The performances, like I, my, I think, like I said earlier, are all pretty solid, all pretty uh, great for the most part in terms of what they were asked to do. I thought Alex Angelo was amazing as Father Angel. He really captured the vulnerability of the character as well as the desperation of this character. It's a very wild, frantic character, and I felt the actor did a remarkable job handling that aspect of. Angel's character. Professor Kavan was a con artist and a fake psychic, and he was honestly kind of an asshole, but I thought the actor Armando de Raza did such a awesome job portraying this con artist character, and he did it in a way that was enjoyable. So he was an asshole, but he was that kind of asshole that you liked watching. You liked him perform his tricks um santiago segura he's really the comic relief the muscle of the group and i liked him as well i thought he had a nice chemistry with the other two uh i, I thought it was a really fun idea to have a metalhead in this kind of movie and have him be so prevalent when it comes to the plot uh, i do wish he, he lived uh despite how annoying and uh, frustrating he was when he was high, hanging off the sign, and almost killed everybody. Um, and I also want to mention... Yeah, there's another... Another uh, actor, another character in this, an actress, who I thought was really good. Um... Da, 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 da. What? It, who is it? Sorry, I'm trying to remember who who it is. Okay, Jose's mother. I think that was. Yeah, I think that was Maria Grazia Cucinata. Yeah, I think that's who, or or it might have been uh, to Torella Pavez, but I forgot what the name of the character was, but. The actress who played uh, Jose's mother, she was a riot. I love that character. Uh, and it's just one of those movies where I like where it's going. It's relatively compelling for the majority of the running time. There are some moments that will make you laugh because of just how crazy and wild it is. It's not as crazy and wild as it could be. But it still has some moments that will make you go like, what the fuck? Like, really? Holy shit. Um, it's a well-shot film when it comes to the direction. The cinematography is also really well done by Flavio Martinez Labiano. There's some really striking, stunning-looking shots. I really like the, the shots of the devil on top of the building with the red skies. Although you ultimately get the idea that that wasn't real, which sucks. Uh, it's edited uh, well by Teresa Font. Uh, I, I really didn't see any moments where the editing was really problematic. For the most part, it was pretty excellent. Uh, the music by Batista Elena. It was a mixed bag. There were some bits of the score that I liked. But there were other bits of the score that just sounded a little generic or a little bit too out of place when it comes to the tone of the film. And 
I would say the hard rock, heavy metal songs or instrumentations that were used in the film uh, stood out a lot more to me than the other traditional instrumental work. It's 103 minutes, and for the most part, it goes by at a pretty good pace. Like I said, it, it keeps you engaged because of the plot and because of the frantic nature of things. It really is a desperate race against time. And then it just cops out at the end. And that's just something that ultimately is just incredibly disappointing. It's like it played a devilish trick on the audience. And I'm sorry, I'm not laughing. Uh, I'm, I'm just incredibly disappointed in the film. It, it's like, it's like one of those things where I'm not mad, but I'm disappointed. Uh, I, I, I really felt like you had more potential here, and you disappointed me. So anyway, uh, I don't know what else to say about The Day of the Beast, except if it interests you in any way, I would recommend giving it a watch sometime, because I, I do feel it's a movie that if you are curious, you should seek it out. Uh, maybe you'll have a different interpretation than me, but I personally feel that it's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty obvious that the intent from the writers is to make this into just a farce. And I, and I understand that was kind of their point. It's it's a farce from the start, but to have it end that way, it is like the equivalent of being pranked. And, it, and it's not one of those pranks that's really that clever either because you started to see things going in that direction in the first place. I mean, there's a whole moment where the priest is disillusioned and he's like, I, I'm just crazy. And it's just because of the acid and we're all seeing things. And then by the end of the film, that's really what ultimately happens. So the priest wasn't wrong. And when a movie normally kind of brings that up the way that this film does, when it comes to the narrative, Nine times out of ten, it then tries to throw some curveball at you that, oh, you thought it was real? Well, it's not. And to me, it's not really something that you don't see coming. It's like a pitcher making the fact that he's going to throw a curveball incredibly obvious to uh, the, the person who's at the plate. And then they get a home run knocked out of the park on them because they thought that they were clever. Uh, or they thought that the, the, the batter was too dumb to, to notice. But anyway, disappointing, but still good. And uh, I'm glad to have it on, uh, on Blu-ray and 4K. It looks great. It's a really good transfer. It's got some good features too, some interesting stuff. Uh, feature length documentary, some other interviews, and so on. So if you're a really big fan of the film, then uh, the release by Severin is definitely something that you should pick up one of these days. But anyway, thanks for watching my review, and as always, I'll see you later. See ya.